Professor Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier will now deliver the commencement speech. Okay. Honorable Chief Executive, Mr. Council Chairman, Mr. President, dear honorable dignitaries, council members, professors and colleagues, dear proud parents and families, and above all, graduates. It is a great honor and privilege for me to receive an honorary doctorate from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and to deliver the commencement speech today. I would like to offer my congratulations to the graduates on the milestone you are achieving today. It is a pleasure to be here to celebrate with you. The invitation to deliver this speech has given me the rare opportunity to reflect on the 25 years that have, that have passed since I was in your position and on the places and people that have shaped my life and my research along the way. It has become clear to me how important it is to be mobile and that international exchange has been a fundamental element throughout my career. In sharing my personal experiences with you, I hope to encourage you, my fellow alumni, to seek out opportunities to broaden your horizons as you embark upon your lives and careers. Please allow me to begin by giving you a brief overview of my own experiences of moving from one place to another and constantly adapting to changing environments. I define myself as a macrobiologist, keeping in mind that macrobiology is highly interdisciplinary and encompasses other fields of research such as molecular biology, genetics, immunology, and biochemistry. Interdisciplinary research as the aim to look at things from different various perspectives, sometimes close, sometimes very far from one's own. Thematically, one could define it as research that crosses borders. But crossing borders, in a literal sense, has also been a highlight of my career. I have worked as an independent principal investigator in Austria and Sweden, and I am no now based in Germany. I never thought that my career path would take me to these countries when I first started my postdoctoral studies in the US. Nevertheless, it already became clear to me during my master's and doctoral studies at the Pasteur Institute in Paris that I needed a fresh perspective if I wanted to expand my personal and academic horizons. I knew that staying in France, as comfortable as that may have been, was not an option. So after sending out dozens of letters to different macrobiology laboratories in the US, I decided to join a group at the Rockefeller University in New York. This was in 1996 when I was 27 years old. I moved into a shoebox of an apartment in New York. It was in fact a very exciting and happy time of my life and career. As a medical macrobiologist coming from a more conservative European research tradition, it was incredibly inspiring for me to witness how the research environment in the US builds bridges between the academic world and the pharmaceutical industry. Back in Europe, I found myself in the historically rich and beautiful city of Vienna, Austria. It was pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised by the international spirit that was blowing through the academic institutions. Science was managed in a way that nobody felt excluded regardless, regardless of which country he or she was from. A completely different experience was being very far north in Umeå, Sweden. I was in a very remote environment and living through extreme winters, but I found state-of-the-art facilities and excellent working conditions with a great sense of respect for junior scientists. This framework enabled me to do some of my best research there. Although I had a very clear motivation for each move, there was either a specific topic I wanted to study new scientific strategies and approaches I wanted to learn or new colleagues I wanted to work with. I was always confronted with unexpected and new challenges that come with moving to a new country and working in new environments. 
Mastering these challenges can be such an enriching experience that I would encourage you to consider pushing your own limits as you move forward. Crossing borders is an integral part in the lives of academics and surely one of the most important aspects of our careers. But what does it actually mean? In its literal sense, we define the term as going from one country to another. But it also has a figurative meaning. In crossing borders, we get new experiences that will not have taken place in our own secure environment. This implies that there is something about the challenge of crossing borders that makes it meaningful. Of course, you can ask yourself whether these endeavors become worthless or obsolete when our digital world allows us to easily exchange information online. I would argue that it has not. First and foremost, because there are many young scientists for whom global mobility, for financial or political reasons, is still extremely difficult. Secondly, because even under ideal conditions, separating yourself from the familiar and immersing yourself in a new environment will always be challenging. But with each of these challenges, you will be pushing your own limits, you will expand your mindset, and eventually you will learn something new about yourself. Crossing borders forces you to self-reflect and teaches you to be open-minded and persistent. And this makes it a valuable experience. For me, it has been a process of refinement. I left France and I went to the US. I lost part of myself, but I gained something new. I left the US and moved to Vienna. I kept the best of the US and left the rest. It may not be easy, but during this process, it is important to find the right balance being staying true, between staying true to yourself and respecting and integrating into the new environment. In doing so, you will be able to build on and be receptive to new ideas. A few iterations, iterations of this cycle, five in my case, will leave you with a core of essence of self that is imbued with your experiences. This helped me realize what my core values are as a person and as a scientist. Having said this, I would wish to emphasize to you that opening up to new environments goes beyond the benefits for the individual. Scientific research all over the world, including our research that led to the development of the CRISPR-Cas9 genome engineering technology, benefits immensely from international exchange, be it through young sojourning scientists or through international collaboration. Exchanges such as this bring uh, fresh ideas, new perspectives, and different ways of approaching problems. They are all catalysts for the innovation that helps us meet global challenges, such as climate change, cancer, and infectious diseases. Perhaps more subtly, these interactions show us that even with our different cultures, ethnicities, and nationalities, the reasons for us to work together far outweigh those that might drive us apart. And in these uncertain post-truth times, where the core values of science are threatened, I think it is crucial that all countries keep an open door to international scientists and that young academics and scientists like yourselves seek out opportunities to broaden your horizons. In closing, as you embark on your lives, I hope you will consider exploring new domains and challenging yourself. It will not only benefit, be a benefit to you, but also to the world. With that, I would like to congratulate to congratulate you on the milestones you have reached today and to wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Thank you.